Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel. How's everybody feeling? It is April. April is National Kidney Donation Month. And ironically, a few days ago, I came across this footage that you're about to watch. And this was while I was on dialysis. The actual date of this footage was in 2020, about three months after we got notice of a worldwide pandemic. China has identified the cause of the mysterious new virus. Coronavirus. Coronavirus. There are fears a rapidly spreading virus has reached Australia. This is a rapidly emerging situation where there is not a cause for alarm. The first U.S. case has been detected. So, of course, during that time, there is a lot going through everyone's mind. Imagine also being at home waiting on news about a kidney. 2020 was difficult for everyone. It was life changing. We were in fear for our lives already, you know, because we just were in the unknown. It felt to me like we were in the twilight zone. I had no idea what was going on, what to expect. And then on top of that, having a life threatening illness that you're fighting at the same time, I definitely was mentally affected. This probably wasn't the best version of me because I felt like the weight of the world was on my shoulders at the time. I just felt like so much was being thrown at me by life. Like I was just ducking and dodging depression. And I think it caught me on the chin once or twice and that's okay. And I fought crawled and scratched my way out of it and sometimes it takes that. This video is from four years ago, which is crazy, um, but I wanted to remind you, although I was going through the highs and the lows of being a chronic kidney disease patient, I didn't share this back then because it seemed extremely pessimistic and because I'm in this place now where I've now received a transplant, I wanted to add just a little bit of encouragement on top of this and being in the space that I am on the other side of it, I can offer that now. I think I just didn't want to further perpetuate anybody out there who is experiencing these feelings that I was also feeling. The highs and lows of waiting on a kidney are the extremes, honestly, um, especially when you're on both lists. So you're on the deceased donor list and in the process of waiting on live donation. There's a lot of news, positive and negative, that can happen on both sides of that. And the way it works is, and I'll, I'll let four-year younger Dawn version of me explain this to you because I was literally experiencing it in the moment. But before I actually received my transplant, I got three notifications about possibilities of me receiving a transplant to then be denied for whatever reason. So the way the algorithm works, however they build it, when it says, okay, this is the priority of which, who gets these next kidneys? So when somebody passes away and they are gracious enough to donate their body to donation, there's two kidneys. So the first two people on that list are the first ones up to receive that kidney. But what the doctors do is they line up two more people just in case something happens with those first recipients. They do not want those kidneys to go to waste. So when you're three and four, you also get the phone call. The only thing about it is a lot of the times, thankfully for the two people ahead of you, but for you and the emotional stress that it caused, as three and four, you get your hopes all the way through the ceiling to a lot of times be let down. And that is an emotional roller coaster. And then on the live donation part, you have somebody who's willing to donate to you, but it doesn't always work out for a variety of reasons. And even in that part, even in the rejection part of it, there's highs and lows to that as well, especially when you're directly connected to someone. So like you have somebody who's giving you a kidney that you know and you love, and they get news like, yeah, we're a match, but I can't do it for this reason. You don't wanna put that person at risk. So you're grateful that they found out X, Y, and Z that they learned throughout their testing because you want them to be safe, but also, you know, you just had your hopes up. So it's like, like a mind jumble. 
And then on the deceased donor side, you genuinely want to be happy because you know the two people ahead of you, when you're number three and four, were in the exact space that you were in. And so you want to be happy for them, just like you want people to be happy for you when it's your turn. But you also go through the emo emotional roller coaster thinking it's your turn, especially for people who have been waiting such a long time or have been denied multiple times or have gotten this news multiple times. It's like, okay, they said I was going to get this kidney. It didn't happen. Okay, maybe the next time. And then the next time comes and it could possibly happen again. And then the next time comes, live or deceased, and you can get rejected again. For me, it was the fourth time around when I finally got the kidney. In this video, you'll be able to see the difference in my physicality, like the swelling from the high level of medication that I was on, and just the trauma that my body was going through. It was important for me to post this now so you can see the positivity behind it all that even if you're getting rejected as a recipient and things keep coming up or they're saying no or you got more tests to do or you need to lose weight or whatever it is and you feel like, dang, I just keep hitting roadblock after roadblock. I'm a testament to show you there is light at the end of the tunnel and that even in the midst of it, live your life, love your life, live in the moment still. All right, without further ado, let's get into the video. And make sure you don't forget to click. It's May 28th, 8.44 p.m. on a Thursday. Um... So about two months ago, I got a call from my brother that he went behind my back and got tested to be a match. For me to give me his kidney, got tested to give me his kidney. And they called him and said that we were a match, though he had to go through testing to make sure everything was okay and that was before corona so actually it was like four months ago and he just called and said that for various reasons it would have been unsafe for him to actually give me the kidney which, to a no-brainer, I would never, ever want to put my brother at risk. It's kind of a relief because me and my brother are extremely close and the thought of anything happening to him kills me. But something happening to him at my expense, I don't know if I could have lived with. So there is. So there is relief I'm experiencing but also it's just the the ups and downs of this process now I've officially been on peritoneal dialysis for a year prior to that I was on hemodialysis for nine months so I'm pushing two years on dialysis now I never thought when I got the news that I would need another transplant that it would be this long. But I also am aware that some people live decades with dialysis. This is the second time that somebody close to me decided to get tested to try to give me a kidney. And 
this is like the second time that I've been denied. And it's just the hills and valleys of it all, the excitement of going through testing, the excitement of getting a confirmation of being a blood match, the confirmation of, oh, this person's healthy. To do the in-depth testing to find out that it won't work out. It's just an emotional roller coaster. Yeah. saddest part for me is that I go share this with my parents and now now I get here my mom in there crying. The things that we experience don't just affect us, but also affect the ones that truly love us. And I used to feel guilty about that. I felt guilty that my life caused pain when my family I've slowly tried to be more kind with myself to understand that that's what family's for. To support and be there and love you. Like I said, today's May 28th and this week a man lost his life. George Floyd and I've been infuriated about it. So now, while I'm hurting and feeling this disappointment, I'm thinking about him and his family and what they're experiencing. I guess I just realized that my situation could be a lot worse. And I also still have faith that something is going to happen. It's just the way that I keep things in perspective. But also learning to allow myself to feel these emotions and not suppress them so I don't implode at another point but that's it that's all I wanted to say Ooh. the emotions were real and they were valid. And here I am, a testament that that girl went through a lot. And she went through the highs and lows of high hopes, high faith, to no hope, little faith. So I just wanted to reassure you guys that it's gonna be okay. You do have to fight. You do have to keep pushing through for what you're feeling during those hard times. We all have them, sick or not sick, kidney disease, or otherwise life can get strenuous and hard for everyone so keep fighting there's light at the end of the tunnel i love you guys don't forget to like subscribe and of course leave a comment or two and i will see you guys in my next video